Hello, and welcome back to Revel Recaps. Today, we're diving into an intriguing revenge horror thriller called Candy Corn, released in 2019. Get ready to settle in and join us for this recap. As the movie opens, we're introduced to four friends at a restaurant. Three are guys, and there's one girl among them. Mike is one of the guys. The conversation revolves around Halloween and the idea of having a blast. Amidst the talk, Mike reveals his intention to mess with Jacob, a boy with autism. The girl in the group voices her moral objection to bullying others and questions why they target Jacob each year. Mike justifies their actions, attributing it to habit and amusement. Despite the girl's efforts, her attempts to dissuade her best friend from joining in fall on deaf ears. She leaves the table in disappointment. Later, Mike and his friends chat while eating, sharing their Halloween plans with the restaurant manager. Mike mentions their intention to scare a guy and give him a fright. The manager is intrigued, seeming like a typical 80s psycho. Jacob Atkins, an autistic young man, lives with his mother and works for a local showman named Dr. Death. Jacob loves candy, especially corn candy, and his routine includes working at a show festival. Dr. Death emphasizes the need for diligent work without causing trouble. The narrative intensifies as the festival approaches. However, things take a dark turn when Mike and his friends encounter Jacob. They cruelly taunt him, pushing and terrifying him. In a moment of self-defense, Jacob shoves Mike, prompting Mike and his friends to launch a brutal attack. The manager, too, joins in reveling in the violence. Amid laughter and the savage beating, Jacob succumbs to the assault and dies. The girl and the rest of the group are shocked into silence by the brutal outcome. Mike later explains his lack of remorse, citing Jacob's perceived uselessness and his unexpected defense. He dismisses Jacob's life as insignificant. When confronted by the girl, Mike and his friends remain callous, displaying a lack of empathy. Disturbed by their actions, the girl turns to the sheriff for help, even though the sheriff's own son is involved. Initially skeptical, the sheriff struggles to believe the accusations. At the festival, Dr. Death is devastated to discover Jacob's death due to the beating. Overcome by emotion, he takes an extraordinary step to revive Jacob, resorting to a voodoo ritual. Placing a mask on Jacob's disfigured face, Dr. Death performs the ritual, resulting in an unexpected transformation. Jacob returns, but he's no longer the same he's been altered into a vengeful and demonic form. Simultaneously, the girl confides in the sheriff, who finds it hard to believe that his son could be connected to such a heinous act. Determined to find answers, the sheriff seeks out Dr. Death to uncover the truth. The next day, the sheriff visits Dr. Death, seeking clarification on Jacob's death. Dr. Death explains that there was a misunderstanding, and Jacob is actually recovering at home from the beating. Feeling a sense of relief, the sheriff visits Jacob's house knocking on the door. When there's no response, he heads back to his car, unaware that Jacob is watching him from a distance. Meanwhile, the girl informs her friend that the sheriff's investigation revealed Jacob's safety. The friend, too, feels relieved. At the restaurant, the manager gleefully recounts his enjoyable Halloween experience. He steps into the restroom, noticing a pumpkin, an oddity in the establishment. Suddenly, Jacob appears, pushing the manager against the wall and choking him to death. The scene turns grisly as Jacob violently pulls out the manager's insides, leaving his lifeless body behind. Later, as the sheriff arrives to investigate, he's confronted by a sea of corn candy scattered about, prompting him to wonder who could be behind this eerie display. Just then, the girl arrives with her friend. The sheriff shares his suspicion that Jacob might have killed the manager. The girl heads over to talk to Mike, seeking his insight. However, Mike is adamant that Jacob wouldn't have the courage to commit such an act. He suggests an alternative theory, proposing that someone else could be responsible for the manager's death. Meanwhile, their friend is at home when he spots a pumpkin at the doorstep. Approaching the door, he becomes the victim of a brutal attack by Jacob. Pushed against the wall, he suffers a gruesome fate as Jacob tears his spine from his back. Simultaneously, the sheriff pays another visit to Dr. Death, voicing his suspicion that Jacob is involved in the killings. Dr. Death explains that Jacob has been at home resting due to his injury and hasn't been at work. Just as they're speaking, another police officer arrives, informing the sheriff of yet another murder. The sheriff initiates another investigation, finding corn candies scattered at the crime scene. 
Now convinced that Jacob is the killer, he joins forces with the police officers and heads to Jacob's house. However, Jacob is nowhere to be found, although they discover the lifeless body of his mother beneath his bed. The sheriff launches a manhunt for Jacob, cautioning Mike and the group to stay indoors and avoid venturing out at any cost. Meanwhile, the festival is shut down by the sheriff and the police who inquire about Jacob's whereabouts. As they grapple with financial difficulties, Mike and his friends confront Dr. Death, seeking answers. Dr. Death reveals that Mike's group was responsible for killing Jacob. He explains that for the first time, a tormented individual has returned from the grave seeking retribution. He describes how he brought Jacob back to life through a ritual. He questions whether it's wrong for bullies to face consequences. The staff members who have experienced similar torment nod in agreement with Dr. Death's perspective. In a cinema, the girl and her boyfriend watch a movie, their minds filled with uncertainty about the ongoing events. Suddenly, as she leaves for popcorn, the girl stumbles upon her boyfriend's lifeless body. Soon after, Jacob appears, showing no mercy as he takes her life. Really? The girl? What the girl do, bro? Not long after, the sheriff arrives at the scene, fatigued from the ongoing investigations. With four murders in a row, he's joined by two investigating officers. Well, well, four murders in the row, two cops investigating. I guess this movie didn't have the best budget. The sheriff contacts his son, urging him to hide from Jacob's impending threat. Fueled by anger, Mike rushes to the festival grounds, questioning the staff about Jacob's whereabouts and the unfolding chaos. However, he's met with a jarring strike to the face, rendering him unconscious. Back at home, the sheriff encounters a shocking surprise, Dr. Death. The situation escalates as Dr. Death points a gun at the sheriff, causing him to lose consciousness after being struck from behind. Dr. Death then prepares for a sinister performance. At the festival, Mike regains consciousness, noticing a police car nearby. He's initially relieved, assuming his father has arrived to rescue him. However, the sight that meets his eyes shatters his relief as he discovers his father's lifeless body, his head brutally disfigured by Dr. Death. And now, Jacob makes his grand entrance. He attacks Mike with a fierce determination, tearing apart his hands and delivering a gruesome demise by extracting his teeth one by one. Months later, the festival relocates, and we witness Dr. Death presenting a necklace to a pleading girl. Unbeknownst to her, the necklace is crafted from Mike's extracted teeth. The end, huh? Horror movie. Thanks for watching. We wish you a wonderful day without any Jacobs near you or that creppy managers. Hey, YouTube, this is a horror movie, so don't get upset. Huh?